In the coming weeks, Health Canada is expected to approve the Pfizer vaccine for children between the ages of 5 and 11. This, of course, is giving parents a lot to think about. So we've been reaching out to doctors and scientists all across the country to answer questions and address concerns. It is a complicated decision, and I'm not arguing against that. And it's good to talk about pros and cons. We did a call out on social media and received hundreds of responses. Here are some of the top questions parents have about vaccinating their children. What would be more common, a child getting heart inflammation from a COVID infection or from taking the vaccine? Heart inflammation post-COVID is higher. It is higher in all age groups, whether it's teenagers and older people. As of October 17th, Public Health Ontario reports 455 cases of the heart condition. That's after more than 22 million doses of mRNA vaccines were administered, and almost all cases were very mild. The highest reporting rate was in males between the ages of 18 to 24. Dr. Fatima Kakar with the University of Montreal tells me the inflammation that can happen in children after contracting COVID is believed to be more common and more severe. Brings kids to the ICU and is what we call this post COVID syndrome. Mm -hmm. And that we're, we're looking at estimates, but we think it could be anywhere from one in 3,000 to one in 100,000. I got an email from one mom who is double vaccinated but would like more transparency in respect to the risk of COVID 19 in children. In most children who get this infection have a mild infection. There's no question about it. During the first three waves in Ontario, more than 70,000 kids under 18 contracted the virus. 401 were hospitalized and 39 were in the ICU. And during that time, two children died. Dr. Kakar has been looking into this data nationwide. You know, when we looked at actual, all the, the kids who were hospitalized, 60% of them didn't have any comorbidity. So it's really, it's, it's a gamble to know which kids are gonna be sickest from COVID. A lack of long-term safety data is another concern that so many parents are talking about. Could this have effects on my child's development? Could it cause cancer, infertility? Biologically, those things can't be affected by what's in the vaccine. And that's why we're reassured that long-term, even if we don't have data, we know how hard it is to alter human genetic material and nothing in this vaccine component is able to do that. What side effects um, can you expect? Will they be similar to what adults experienced? Uh, absolutely. Uh, th although I will point out that if you look at the younger age group in the current the uh, current ones that are being vaccinated, the 12 to 17 year olds, they have the lowest incidence of any adverse effects. I, I think there will be children who get flu-y kinds of symptoms. There may well be heart inflammation and we need to be on the lookout for that. But in general, um, I do not think that it is likely that we will see surprises in terms of vaccine side effects for this age group. Another thing many parents are concerned about is the possibility of COVID-19 immunization being mandated for children in schools. The vast majority of parents I've been talking to for this story believe that it should be a choice at least until there's more data and research on the vaccines. In Mississauga, Shauna Hunt City News.